All right, hello. We're going to be talking about sequences. Sequence questions pretty much deal with three types of sequence. Arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences, and unique sequences. Arithmetic sequences deal with addition. Geometric sequences deal with multiplication. And unique sequences are made up by the SAT. So if you see a geometric sequence or arithmetic sequence, focus on the difference between the terms. So if it was 2, 4, 6, your difference would be 2. If it's a geometric sequence, focus on the ratio between the terms. So if it was 2, 4, 8, the ratio would be 2. And if it's a unique sequence, make sure that you add some terms so you can determine the pattern of the sequence. So let's start with arithmetic sequences. Again, arithmetic sequences are ones in which you're adding or subtracting the same number over and over and over. So in this one down here, you can see first the equation. Any term you're trying to solve for is going to be the first term, t1, plus the difference times n minus 1. Be careful. Most people screw this up and multiply by n. What I mean by that is if you're going from the first term to the tenth term, and you're in a sequence where you're adding 3 every time, most people would think you would add 3 ten times, but you don't. You add it nine times. So in this sequence below, we have 5, 18, 31, 44. What is the fifth term in the sequence? So we're adding 13 every time, so the next term is going to be 57. That wasn't too bad. But if I asked you for the tenth term, you would need to say it's 5 plus 13 times 9. So in this case, the tenth term would be 5 plus 117 or 122. Remember, you're only going to add, the number of times you're going to add the difference is going to always be the difference between the terms. So if you're going from terms 1 to 10, 9 times. If you're going from terms 2 to 10, 8 times. A geometric sequence, on the other hand, is a sequence that involves multiplying. So there's a common ratio between the numbers. In the sequence 2, 4, 8, 16, that ratio is 2. If you're trying to calculate a term far out in a sequence, you need to know the equation. Any term, Tn, is equal to the first term times r raised to the n minus 1 power. Again, people oftentimes mess up by multiple, raising it to the n power. For example, in the sequence I gave you 2, 4, 8, if you wanted the tenth term, it would be 2 times the ratio, which is 2, raised to the ninth, not to the tenth. So in this one, what is the fifth term of the following sequence? Negative 2, 6, negative 18. What are we multiplying by each time? The ratio is negative 3. So it's going to be negative 2 times negative 3 raised to the fourth power. So go ahead and, and figure that out. So negative 2 times negative 3 raised to the fourth power is going to be negative 162. Unique sequences are the last of the three types of sequences that the SAT requires you to understand. Unique sequences are just made up. They're going to give you the sequence. They're going to tell you how it's formed. It's up to you to create some new terms and to find out what they're asking for. So in the sequence below, we have negative 1, 1, negative 1. And it says that basically repeats. So we want to follow this three steps to solve unique sequences. First, we want to add at least three more terms. So we're going to write out another 1, negative 1, 1. Then we want to break the sequence down into a repeating pattern. Here the repeating pattern is just negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1. So what you can see is, is that every odd term is negative 1, every even term is 1. And now if we're looking for the 27th term, it's easy. It's an odd term, and so it's going to be negative 1. Oftentimes, if you add terms, you will see the pattern. And remember, the pattern is the thing that repeats over and over and over again. It's like looking at a chain and identifying a single link. So make sure that you add enough terms that you can see the thing that repeats. It oftentimes looks like something else until you add a few extra terms. One last thing that's often involved in challenging questions related to sequences is summing sequences. If you're trying to sum an arithmetic sequence, you need to understand that it's as simple as adding the two terms, the first and the last, and multiplying by how many terms you have over two. I know that seemed kind of difficult, but let's make sure you understand it. If we wanted to add up all the numbers from 1 to 10, mentally, what is 1 plus 10? 11, 2 plus 9, 11, 3 plus 8, 11. What you can see is that we're building pairs of 11. So if I asked you to add up all the numbers from 1 through 10, it would be 11 times 5. The 5 comes from the fact that there are 5 pairs. So now try a little harder one. What are all the numbers from 1 to 100 add up? Again, 1 plus 100 is 101. 2 plus 99 is 101. So we're building pairs of 101. So the answer to this question would be 101 times 50, or 5,050. No matter what type of arithmetic sequence you're dealing with, you can always do this the same way. Add the first and last term, terms, and then multiply by the number of terms over 2. Now in a geometric sequence, if you actually add the terms, you need to understand that the ratio must be between negative 1 and 1. Otherwise, it would blow up. So for example, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, you can't sum that because it would go to infinity. 
But if you have a, uh, a geometric sequence that's 4, 2, 1 half, or in this case, 2, 1, 1 half, the ratio is less than 1. And so it will converge to a number. Now, if you don't remember the equation I'm about to give you, you can often just add up the terms and start to see where they're kind of heading. But if we do want to do this, what we do is we divide the first term, in this case 2, by 1 minus the ratio. So the ratio here is 1 half. So 2 over 1 minus 1 half is going to yield 4. And now we're going to look at some sequence questions uh, that you would see on the SAT so you can master this concept.